Hello and good evening, America. I'm Brittany Brackett, and this is your Onyx News. Live from Onyx News Universal Studios. Coming up next. Truck driving reverend charged with murdering Alabama teenager. Supreme Court reviews case on racial bias in jury selection. In an update from our last report on this story, a young black man, 17-year-old Antoine Rose, was shot and killed by Michael Rosfeld in a routine traffic stop, and the officer's story seems to be rather inconsistent. Rosfeld cannot seem to recall pertinent details of why he deemed it necessary to shoot Rose or what he thought might have been in Rose's hands to threaten his life after all. AP News stated this in an article, what really, really matters is what Michael Rosfeld knew and what he believed and what he thought when he pulled the trigger. Deputy District Attorney Daniel Fitzsimmons expressed to jurors in this introductory statement. Onyx News reporter Nell Johnson gives us an update in the case. Nell? Brittany, as you stated, what was important is why the officer in question shot that unarmed black teenager uh, when he had his hands up and when he had pulled the car over. There were three there were three people in the car and the car and they allegedly pulled the car over because a call came into the police officers of a drive by shooting and their car fit that description. Now, when they when they pulled the car over, the, the car did have bullet holes, so they ascertained it probably was the car in question for the drive by shooting. But right. what followed after that was that the three teenagers got out of the vehicle. The driver was being uh, processed in, he was being handcuffed and Rose and another gentleman that was in the back seat, which they mm -hmm. uh, deemed did the shooting in the drive by had their hands up. But for some reason they decided to run. And when they ran, Antoine was shot. And it's unfortunate because, you know, whether Rosfeld meant to shoot Rose isn't the issue. It's whether or not he followed protocol. So what proof exactly. shows that he followed protocol with the way that Rose was killed? Well, there's no proof. Uh, he was running away from him, not toward him. He was run. Both of those uh, uh, teenagers were running away from the police officer. So there was no protocol followed in that situation. And what they said that he he wasn't even a part of or didn't do any of the shooting Rose for the drive by. What he did have was a empty um, clip, a, a gun clip, clip in, in his, his pocket, pocket, right? In his pocket, not in his hands, but in his pocket. So right now, there is no reason for the police officer in question to have shot uh, Rose, and that's why he's he shot him with, uh, in the face, homicide. elbow, and the back. Well, he, he was, was shot in the back, yes, right, and in the elbow, and I and I. Uh, and in the head, ex exactly. So there's no reason for that. I think it was a, a rush to judgment or he panicked or, or something, but that's still not a valid reason. He's not a novice officer, even though he right. was sworn in that police station earlier that day before the incident. He's a seven-year veteran of the police force, so he's not a novice to uh, police work. Well, one thing about this trial is that it started already and it boasts three of six African-American jurors, which is great because they're from all parts of the state. Do you think diversity will really help deliver a realistic outcome now? Diversity always helped because um, we in America are a diverse uh, group of people. So diversity always helps, but it still should be based on the evidence and based on what's presented. So the outcome should be um, hopefully the truth, the truth is what should come forth. And then once it's, it, it comes forth, then the proper judgment should be placed on him, regardless if he's a police officer or a layman, the truth Correct. should come forth and it should be, the, the punishment should levy what, well, what dictates. Well, do we know the status of the young men that Rose was riding with? I mean, they, weren't, they were not killed, but do we know how they're being charged in this case? Well, they're not being charged in this particular case. My understanding okay. was the driver was released because he didn't have anything to do with that. 
um, and, but the one that did the killing, the the person in the back seat. Now he was charged with killing another, uh, the uh, person in the drive-by shooting, but not right. in this. Well, and it's it's a really touchy situation because the police station has actually been shut down because this is considered a racially motivated shooting. So with the state police now handling this territory, what outcome is really expected in this case now? Well, we're waiting. We're hoping we're and well, we're waiting for it. Um, everyone involved are waiting for it. Of the, the outcome that's expected, the family as well, is justice for Antoine. They're, they're waiting for justice. Again, he was running away from the police officer. He wasn't running toward him, so he wasn't trying to do any bodily harm. Right. So the family is hoping that there's justice for Antoine in this situation. Well, I agree, and I'm sure the whole country agrees with this. This is a really sad case. And, of course, we will be getting updates from you in the future. Nell Johnson, thank you so much for reporting for Onyx News. Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg under the microscope, up next. Do you have trouble falling asleep or wake up with a sore neck or headache? Then it's time you discovered MyPillow. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. 10 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I backed my pillow with a 10 year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I personally guarantee that my pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Call now or go to mypillow.com. Use this promo code to save over 50% on a MyPillow 4 pack with two premium pillows and two Go Anywhere pillows. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Facebook has decided to pull back its targeting of ads that help companies sell to consumers by providing private buying habits, among other intrusive tactics. Last April, Facebook was under fire with how they were ever so crafty at using ad placement promotion to steer consumers to buy almost any and everything. Now CEO Mark Zuckerberg has answered the call to relinquish some of the big brother methods used by the company and has decided to play by the rules this time. Onyx correspondent April Phelps tells us more about this. April. Yes, yeah, Zuckerberg has, this has been a battle for 18 months and they are in the midst of hammering this out as we speak where the ads cannot go to because uh, they're they're targeting only certain certain audiences um like the fair housing they don't send those ads out to um single women they don't send them out to the elderly and just like uh, male dominant jobs they don't send them out to women they only send them out to men well, the fact that they're regulating this is highly important because it is illegal mm -hmm. to use this tactic when it comes to housing or anything else that might hinder or deter someone from receiving a certain level of treatment. You know, the company also plans to reduce public sharing. Hallelujah, right? Public sharing is mm -hmm. what everybody does. How will this affect their bottom line, April? They get well, a lot of Facebook their money. Makes... They get a lot of money from this. A lot of their money from advertising. Yeah. I, I believe the number was yes. around forty billion back in twenty seventeen. Yes. They... yes, they do. They make uh, the majority of their um, money off of advertising, um, and they're going. They're going to what it was established to be to begin with, which is just on messaging. Get you know just just people being able to get whatever their message is out on Facebook versus um, versus all the sharing and all of that. Right. And the tricky part is, you know, now when you go shopping on Facebook or even when you go to Facebook for actual Facebook searches and, and the fun of Facebook, now that pair of shoes that you looked at on another site is going to be popping up on Facebook. It's, it's amazing. Absolutely. You know, it, that that Absolutely. was the case for so long and people used to wonder how did how did facebook know that i was searching for this but mm -hmm. anyway i digress
So Facebook is getting over its bad publicity due to the involvement in the 2016 presidential election with the fake Russian mm -hmm. accounts. Do you think that this could reach, or it, do you think Facebook's reach could affect future elections with what their changes might be? Oh, well, according to our resources, um, this is something that they're keeping. Uh, they're they're keeping under uh, under investigation. They're mm -hmm. making sure that they're taking steps to uh, ensure that there's no breaches anywhere in uh, in their Facebook. They're they're making sure that everything is properly. Um, that, that everything is properly taken care of so that way there's no no breaches no fake accounts um it, because there's always the uh, ability to be able to um if you believe that there is a fake account you have the ability to be able to report, to report that fake mm -hmm. account mm -hmm. absolutely and one thing that i also would like to kind of understand about this what do you think other companies can learn from facebook's demise with all of this you know Google is probably number one with Facebook being number two when it comes to mm -hmm. the largest search engines and being able to, to have all this power. What do you think these other companies can really learn from Facebook's mistakes? Well, just watching to see what it is, where their failures are, where they have failed, um, then they make sure that all these other companies they just make sure that they don't follow along in those footsteps and so all these all these steps that that facebook is taking to um to fix the issues that they've had in the past they're making sure that going forward that mm -hmm. those are not the issues that they continuously have to deal with that once everything is settled once the dust is settled then Facebook can carry on the way that Facebook has been meant to carry on. You know, we do understand that it is a, uh, it is all about marketing. It's all about marketing. You and know, they make, they, Facebook makes billions of dollars a year just off of the marketing of the advertising. aspect. And even back in the day when I was in high school, a lot of other people too, I'm sure, Facebook wasn't quite as devious, so to speak because you know mm -hmm. people were actually using it for the fun of what Facebook really should be. Um, but mm -hmm. I do hope that Facebook has really learned their lesson. Mark Zuckerberg has had a tough time um, you know, before Congress and before all of the, the things that he's had to deal with. So anyway, April Phelps, interesting topic and thank you for your take on this. Our guest, Pastor Mark Burns, is here to talk up next. Do you have trouble falling asleep or wake up with a sore neck or headache? Then it's time you discovered MyPillow. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. 10 years ago, I invented MyPillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I backed my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I personally guarantee that my pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Call now or go to mypillow.com. Use this promo code to save over 50% on a MyPillow 4-pack with two premium pillows and two Go Anywhere pillows. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Only God can judge me will be the thoughts of preacher Colin McCranny of Alabama. He has been charged with the horrific deaths of two teens more than two decades ago. Tracy Hollett and J.B. Beasley were brutally killed, but thanks to DNA genealogy testing, their cold case murders have been solved. Pastor Mark Burns joins us, who serves as one of the spiritual advisors to President Trump as senior pastor of Harvest Praise and Worship Center as well in South Carolina. Hello, Pastor. Happy to be here. So tell us what you think in regard to how the murders have encouraged new genealogy testing across the U.S., well, I think it's a good thing um, that um, we have this new technology um, to be able to identify um, so many cold cases that have been mm -hmm. unsolved. 
And in this case, this case has been a cold case for over 20 years. Um, and it is, um, I think, a great thing for the criminal justice system and uh, for the ailing parents and, 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 and those who are still alive, uh, victims, uh, families of victims um, who have no idea what happened or who was responsible for the death of their loved ones. So this is a major move uh, in technology in discovering ways to identify uh, uh, to identify murderers um, and those who have committed, you know, horrendous crimes. That has been a cold case for so many years. Well, it's it's interesting that you said you know these these crimes and what that's going to do for the justice system because this is a privacy issue as well. You know, a lot of people's mm -hmm. privacy can be affected because with what happened with this genealogy testing, they had the family member of McCauley, uh, Macaulay actually tested so that they knew that it came from a specific family. He was mm -hmm. never really tested, which is interesting with this because even though they did have some evidence of him prior to this, they actually narrowed it down with the genealogy with the tree of, of his family. So how do you think this will really change how privacy will be affected when they're when they're trying to find these criminals? Well, th 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 there's an argument on both sides. Um, mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, the issue of privacy. Uh, but in this particular case, there are over 23 million, um, uh, 23 million um, uh, uh, DNA, genealogy DNA testing that has been done here in America, and out of the 23 million, um, you know, less than 1 million um, that have volunteered, and that's the key word, they volunteered to place their genealogy in this particular bank um, so that um, it is simply public record um, for law enforcement officers um, who has received permission to do their type of testing. And again, I, I, I do think it could be, uh, it could turn into a very negative uh, if it's been misused, very similar to what Facebook, um, it, it, the trouble Facebook is in right now with uh, them overstepping privacy of people's information. Um, and so if it's in, in the wrong hands, uh, this type of testing could be misused. But in this particular case, what this uh, truck driver preacher, um, in his case, um, one of his family members had to uh, use the genealogy testing um, out of the 23 million, again, less than 1 million, has done this, and one of his family members happened to have done it. Now, it is proven they also did get testing from him later on um, to verify uh, his DNA. They did not mention how they did it, uh, but right. they did get his DNA, <clears throat> excuse me, and it is all lining up. And so um, I, I do hope uh, that if it's proven he is guilty, that the, uh, the, the parents of these two young victims killed, um, right. raped, and murdered at the age of 17 um, in 1999, thrown in the back of a car uh, and, and tied up, shot mm -hmm. in the head. Shot in the um, head this right. is a crime that desperately needs to be solved, and I hope they find their person. Well, they, they have with, with McCraney. The, I mean, the thing is with him, I'm just concerned. And He's got to so be convicted, though. Are He's got to be convicted. Right, but the DNA doesn't lie as well. So they have enough evidence to have arrested him in this case, which means, of course, yes, he still has to be convicted, but right. there's plenty enough evidence, at least for now, that they think well, <laughs> is going to be and I, and I a agree. I agree. Him. I'm not a prosecutor and I'm not a criminal justice, but I, I do agree. I just want to be careful. Uh, the question know, they, they, is whether he he's going to get convicted. a fair trial, though, in Ozark. Yeah, That's the absolutely. real question. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, but, you know, this is a really sad case, and justice hopefully is on the way for these families. You know, this, this yeah. gentleman has gotten away with this for 22 years, and hopefully DNA genealogy will, uh, will be able to, to solve this case. So, Pastor Mark Burns, thank you for your time, sir. Mr. Flowers in Mississippi, we're here to talk about the racial divide up next. Do you have trouble falling asleep or wake up with a sore neck or headache? Then it's time you discovered MyPillow. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. 10 years ago, I invented MyPillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. 
I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I backed my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I personally guarantee that my pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Call now or go to MyPillow.com. Use this promo code to save over 50% on a MyPillow 4-pack with two premium pillows and two Go Anywhere pillows. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family, the first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Immune Fortress is a supplement that helps increase your glutathione, also known as GSH, nature's master of all antioxidant levels in the body, which are often deficient due to overall aging. And when chronic illness is present, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, and kidney problems. The key to Immune Fortress effectiveness, other than taking it correctly, is consistency. To get the best results, take it on a daily basis so your body has the elements it needs to naturally consistently build glutathione levels in order to fight and repair cellular damage and boost your health. Order our Combo 1-2 Punch to boost your immune system today. www.immunefortress.com forward slash now. Imagine being in jail for 22 years without a conviction because the jury pool is not diverse enough. This is the case for Curtis Flowers in Jackson, Mississippi, the man who allegedly murdered four people over an employment disagreement in 1999. Racial prejudice in the case has exacerbated the entire process and prevented a fair trial, with six separate hearings held with no means to an end. To make matters worse, many believe District Attorney Doug Evans is sabotaging the judgment. Ray Charles Carter, who represented Flowers in his last four criminal trials, said this, Mr. Evans has a history of keeping black folks off the jury, so he can guarantee himself a victory, pretty much. Onyx News and mental health uh, expert Angela Sign is not here, but we do have April Phelps who's joining us. April? Yes, Evans has removed black jurors four and a half times more than he has white jurors. And in an analysis of 6,700 juries with 225 trials over the span of 26 years, um, Evans is, has, as you stated, has been known to, um, to strike black jurors over white jurors. Um, and he, he does, he makes his case saying that uh, in this case, that the five women that he that he um, that he crossed out of the jury selection. Those five women either worked with his family members, Flowers family members, or was sued by Tardy, or or knew him in some kind of relation. They knew and was uh, um, connected to Flowers, and that's why they they are saying that those five women have been uh, crossed out of the jury selection. I guess. What amazes me, April, is they dismissed 15 black jurors mm -hmm. and they deemed it to be not prejudicial. How can that mm -hmm. be deemed not prejudicial with everything that you just stated when it came to those specific black jurors? Well, the, the way that they um, the, the way that they cross out any juror is that how they do it is it's based on whether they know the, the the person that is is on trial 
whether they feel that that person is going to be biased to the other person or if they have, have any relationship with the family of that person. Those are the ways that they cross a, uh, a juror out. And, you know, in this case, it, it just so happens that Flowers is a black man and the, and the, the five ladies that um, they did cross out, five of those, they knew him, his family, and the Tardy. They, they were connected to the Tardy right. uh, uh, furniture store as well. Of course, and that does make it difficult. You know, you, there are certain prerequisites that have to be or not be an issue for you to be able to be a juror on a case like this. And the strange part of this is, you know, 32 years ago, the Supreme Court case Batson versus Kentucky had tried to prevent discrimination and dismissal of race with all these these things that were going on back then. Do you really feel that we've made progress with this case? Well, according to our sources, it, this is being looked into because of this issue. It is being looked into. They are um, they are trying to go back and see what it is that they can uh, that they can uh, stop doing, which is one we're uh, crossing these people out for these things that we believe. That's right. the issue. Is we believe they may be um, they may go against what we're what we're trying to. Um, take care of here and well so the pot they are go ahead they, so they're they're trying to uh nullify that if if i may they're trying to make it to where that will be not be able to be one of the things that they're allowed to nix a uh, right. juror for well I, I will say this the podcast in the dark has mm -hmm. made the supreme court very interested in this story mm -hmm. so what else might have really prompted them to get involved? I, I asked that question because, you know, NPR reported that 600 jurors were narrowed down to 12. 50% mm -hmm. of the community is black, okay? They deliberated seven days with 11 white jurors and only chose one black juror, which amazes me and I'm sure amazes the rest of the city. The jury deliberated for 29 minutes, April. They sentenced him to death during this trial. Mm -hmm. Could the trajectory of this trial be different if they if they were not biased? And we have a little less than a minute. Well, you know, um, with with that, I, I, according to our sources, um, because of Evans' history, that this could have went a different way uh, if he would not have been able to strike the. Um, the jurors that he did strike, it possibly could have went uh, another way. Well, I tell you what, this is a very difficult case to listen to, and, and we will be watching, and we'll be looking for updates. Thank you very much, April Phelps. As always, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch Onyx News. We look forward to coming into your homes every day. Once again, I'm Brittany Brackett, and this has been Onyx News. Make sure you say hello to us on all of our media outlets. Onyx News, news from a black perspective. Good night, America.